Welcome to the Yacht Explorer video check-in for the Hansa 548 Mila Felice. My name is Nick from 45 Degree Sailing and I'm going to take you through all of the operations of the boat and the features so that you know what to do when you're out on charter. First we're going to run through the engine operations and the control panels here at the main helm station. Here you have your main power and gear control, power start stop system for the engine, your bow thruster and stern thruster with the power on off button here. This is the Yanmar engine display with multi-touch display, compass, your lights for your garage, the stern door control and the starboard table hydraulic control. You have your BNG chart plotter here and your BNG autopilot and another BNG display which you can switch through. To start your engine, press power here to turn on the power to the display. Your Yanmar engine speed will show here. Then press start stop to start your engine. Always ensure that you are in neutral before starting and once you have started that there is water flowing from the outtake. If there is no water from flowing from the outtake, then there's a problem with the cooling system, turn your engine off immediately. To engage in forward gear, move forward here, and you'll hear it engage. To engage in reverse gear, click into reverse. Be very careful with this, as this is an electric throttle, so it does not react like a cable throttle. Be very careful when switching between gears. To stop your engine, press stop. And then turn off the power to the display. Your bow thruster control is here. To turn on the bow thrusters, push this button here. Be very careful to know that you do not turn this off again while it is in the process of lowering the bow thrusters. These are retractable bow thruster and stern thruster that lower into the water. Once you hear the song stop singing then the thrusters are live. It will beep every few moments to tell you that the thrusters are on. To move your bow to the port push the forward lever to port. To move the bow to starboard move the leaders to starboard. Be careful not to run this for too long push this for a maximum of four seconds at a time and do not go instantly from left to right. Same with the stern thruster, to move the stern to port, move the lever to port. And to move the stern to starboard, move the lever to starboard. To turn the bow thrusters off and retract them back up into the hull, push and hold this button here. Here we have the 12 inch BNG display panel. You have one of these at each helm station. They are identical, but this is the main unit on the starboard helm station. To access the applications and different views, press this button in the top right. Here you can choose from your charts or your sailing information through to your wind plotter or a split chart view. This is a touchscreen system, so you can pinch to zoom and zoom out to pan. And you can also select points on the map and find the information about them. Use the sail steer to access a lot of your sailing data and information here. You also have the option of using the Saison system by using Saison here. Here you can choose which systems are in operation and control them from this panel. Note that if you turn off navigation's electronic here, you will immediately lose power to this panel. You can also choose the modes on this section here. When operating your autopilot, the BNG control for autopilot is right here. Press auto and this will hold the heading. 
you will get a display here about your heading. You will also have autopilot information on the BNG touch panel here. Be careful that when this orange rim is around the autopilot, the zoom control will control the autopilot as well. Select the chart so that that does not happen. Hit standby to stop and you can steer manually. Under automatic, you can hit plus one or plus 10 to change your degrees to starboard. You can choose minus one or minus 10 to change your heading to port. Press standby to steer manually. The second display here has multiple pages you can view by pressing this button to change pages. At the port helm, you have the operational switch for the port table in the saloon. Push down to lower the table and push up to raise the table. Here is the switch for the light and the bimini in the cockpit. Turn this way to turn on, this way to turn off. The signal box is located here for the horn. You also have a BNG autopilot control at this helm station and the 12 inch touchscreen with charts. When anchoring, make sure that your engine is on and your revs are excited to help charge the batteries and help the anchor windlass as it brings the anchor up. To excite the throttle in neutral, press this button, neutral, so the neutral light is illuminated and neutral is flashing. Then you can move the throttle forward and increase the revs without being in gear. To go back to gear, return this to the neutral position, press the neutral light again so that neutral is not flashing, then you can engage in gear. When the neutral light is off, you are in gear. When anchoring on board Mila Felice, grab the anchor locker control out of the forward skipper's cabin hatch. Make sure your engine is on and in neutral with the revs excited to about 1400 revs. The controller has a button to lower the anchor and raise the anchor and a button for the light on the remote. The display will tell you how much chain you have let out. To lower the anchor, make sure that the pin in the end of the anchor has been removed and it is ready to go down. Then press down on the controller. In the beginning you'll have to drop a small amount of chain and then help the anchor over the bowsprit. Once the anchor is ready to go down, press down on the controller slowly so as the anchor does not swing into the boat. To raise the anchor, press on the up button. If you hear the capstan start to strain, stop on the button and wait till the boat gets closer to the anchor. Be very careful when raising the anchor at the last point as it comes out of the water as it can swing and hit the hull. So make sure to go slow. If the anchor is twisted, get the boat hook to spin the anchor so that it comes up the correct way onto the bowsprit and into the cradle. Once you're finished, return the controller to the cradle and lock your hatch. Inside the starboard lazarette, we have certain equipment. In here we have the bosun's chair, the spear anchor, hose for the deck wash pump, bucket, funnel, oars for the tender, a baler, spear lines, pump for the dinghy, and a fire extinguisher. So the first thing we're going to start with is the main control panel for the C-Zone system. The C-Zone system controls all of the electrics throughout the yacht and is worked from this panel here. So. Starting here with our main menu, it's all touchscreen. Favorites here. Also, this button here will change the brightness 
of your C-Zone panel. Starting with favorites. Here we have the power systems explained on the yacht. Your battery service battery level, your engine battery level, bow thruster battery, and your stern thruster battery here. Swipe to move around. This will show the level of your blackwater tanks, the forward port, blackwater tank forward starboard, blackwater tank aft port, and blackwater tank aft starboard. These are all separately controlled blackwater tanks. Your freshwater tank level is at 87.9 at the moment. Fuel tank on port and fuel tank on starboard. Moving on to your modes. This is the easiest way to change the operational status of the yacht. So here we have a number of different modes you can use, i.e. boating day engine mode. If we want to activate this, then you'll make sure you have no navigation lights running. Anything that is needed to be running by night will not be on. If you engage boating night engine mode, then you can turn that mode on. Then your navigation lights for motoring on board the yacht will be on. For instance, if you activated this mode, anchor mode, it's going to deactivate the night mode and turn it into anchor mode where you have your anchor light on. The shore power mode will automatically activate based on what amperage you are connected to. Moving on to control. In the control section, you have all of the options to turn on and off throughout the yacht. The refrigerator or freezer, the fresh water pump. Now note that the fresh water pump will automatically stop working when you drop below 5% of your water power. So if the fresh water pump stops working, head over to your favorites and see if your water tank is empty. All of the controls are in here as said before, your lights in your cockpit, your compass light, courtesy side deck lights, your engine room light, and all of these other options. Navigation lights are here and the spotlight on the deck. Again, tap an option and you can turn it on or turn it off. The navigational electrics are here and in the mode we are on at the moment, they are automatically on. To turn these off, first select navigation electronics and press off or on. Moving out to the monitoring section. This is where you can monitor what's happening on board the yacht right now. Whether your shore service is coming in and how much voltage. Your AC service here. Generator, it's not running at the moment so it is not registering. Here you have the output running at the moment out of the yacht. And whatever the shore AC is coming in. You've got your freshwater tanks and all of your other levels on board the yacht. Your inverter charger section shows the process of what's going on throughout the boat. Here we have the inverter process. So from shore service, it is coming through. It runs through a breaker switch, which is located in the garage in the aft of the boat, through to the inverter and charger. The line to the battery service is working properly, and the line to the outputs in the boat is also working properly. If there is an issue with one of these lines, you will have a white line. So when you disconnect the shore service, this will then turn into a white line. So we've just disconnected the shore service and you can see this is now a white gray line without the arrows on it. When we reconnect the service, this line will then change to blue with the arrows. As you can see now, it is reconnected and working properly again. When you swipe over here, you will then have the same operation for the shore or the generator, and you can monitor that also. If you have any major problems with any of the C-Zone system or the power systems and you cannot diagnose it, call Yacht Explorer immediately. Moving on to alarms. You will have this alarm here for the manual bypass on a control furler as it is currently being bypassed. If you have an alarm show up here, like a blackwater tank is full or another issue has come up on the boat, it will display here. Your generator control is also located here at the chart table. To turn on your generator, hold the power button on the Panda control. It will turn on. Give it a moment to start up. 
once the messages have finished running, you can press start stop here. At the moment you can see it's on standby. Press start and let it do its thing. It will display a preheat signal and then a starting signal before giving you the amperage that is running into the batteries. There's the click. Once you hear the click on the port side of the boat where the power is stored, that is the automatic switch to change from shore power to generator or from 12 volt power to generator power. Once your generator is running and you are disconnected from shore power, you can also run the air conditioning with the generator power. To stop the generator, press stop once and it will automatically switch over from the previous control and turn off. Once it's at standby, hold down the power switch and it will turn off the power to the panel. The VHF radio is located in this cupboard here above the chart table. Your main controller is here. You also have a cigarette lighter 12 volt plug in here for charging a handheld VHF or any other devices. To turn the VHF on, hold down on the power button. The BNG VHF also has a handheld remote located down here. Once it starts up, channel 16 is the International Distress and Calling Channel. Artsy marinas and other marinas around Croatia will operate on channel 17. Rotate this dial to change the channel. Here is your volume and squelch control. Turn clockwise to increase the volume and to change the squelch or the sensitivity of the radio, press this in and then adjust. Hold down power to turn the VHF off. You also have this handheld control for the VHF. To turn this on, hold down the power button here. This will start up and then search for a signal. Once it has found the signal with the main base station is turned on, it will display the channel here. You can use this up on deck instead of having to come down and use this remote down here and it has its own volume and sensitivity settings. When you adjust these settings or channels, it will adjust on the main unit at the same time. To adjust your volume, you have a buttons on the side. Now this will only adjust the volume for this unit. It will not adjust the volume for the main unit. To turn this off, hold down power again. Now this will charge when it is on the cradle. Here at the navigation table you have your Adriatic Sea Pilots Volume 1 and 2 for the coast of Croatia. You also have your light lists and regulations books along with a few other helpful resources including of course your charts for the entire cruising area of Croatia. You have navigational equipment, pencils, compasses, dividers and rulers and some spare shackles in here in case you need them. In the side panel here, you, this is where we keep the suction cup for taking off the floorboards and a flashlight. There is air conditioning throughout the entire boat. Here in the saloon, you have two main controllers for the two units that are in the saloon. You also have air conditioning in the forward cabins and the aft cabins. To turn on the air conditioning, make sure you are connected to either shore power or the generator is running. Otherwise your air conditioning will not run. Hold down the power button on the unit itself. Use these two arrows to set the temperature you would like to cool the boat to. Once it resets, it will tell you the current temperature inside the boat. You can change your fan speed here, either auto, one, two, or three. And you can change the mode from auto to cooling, heating or dehumidify. Easiest to leave this on auto. To turn the air, con air conditioning unit off, hold down the power button. It's very important to remember not to start all of the air conditioning units all at once once you start the air conditioning. This is a huge amount of draw of power and you could clip the fuse on the shore power or on the generator. So start two panels and then wait 10 minutes, start the next two panels. 
The air conditioning service valves are located underneath the saloon table under this patch. Take the suction cup and lift the panel off here. If you see HP displayed on the panel, that means high pressure and you need to bleed the air out of the valves. Right down here we have the seawater filter and below this is the valve for the intake of seawater. For any reason, if you need to close that valve, it is located underneath this filter. From here, the water travels up into the impeller onto the compressor pump. Here is the outflow of the water. It is split into these units here. These all must be open and open for the air conditioning to run. If you have a problem with the air conditioning where the display displays HP for high pressure. You have air in the system and you need to bleed the system. To do this, run the air conditioning while unscrewing this valve slowly. Once you find the air coming out of it slowly, stop until water starts to come out. Run a small amount of water out and then close the valve. Then to touch the impeller you should hear water flowing through and this should be cool to the touch with cool water flowing through. The engine is located underneath the stairs on the companionway. You can see all of your necessary items here including your levels of coolant and you can check your oil. Also the emergency stop for the engine is here, this red button. To stop the engine, hit down on this red button. If the engine will not start, push and twist this back to the start position. If the electronic throttle cuts out and is not working from the helm station, the emergency start, stop and throttle controls for the engine are located underneath the skipper's table here. To turn the power on to the engine and preheat, push here. To start the engine, hold, press start. The throttle is controlled by this here. To shift gears in an absolute emergency, take this cover off. To move into gear, click either forward or reverse. And then you can control your throttle here. Click back to center for neutral. To stop your engine, hold down stop. The service battery main switches are located underneath the chart table here. These two red tabs. When they're in this position vertical, they are on. When you turn them clockwise, they are off. The engine battery switch is located in the aft port cabin here. Again, in this position it is on, and in this position it is off. Underneath the chart table on the left side, as you look in here, underneath this panel is all of the fuses for the lights. Now, if one of these fuses is not working, it will have a red flashing light above it. You can see if you have a broken fuse looking through the top of the window of the cover. If you see a red flashing light, remove the cover and replace the fuse pertaining to that light. If the fuse is working correctly, there will be a solid green light above it. If there is no light illuminated above the fuse, neither red nor green, that means there is not currently power running through that fuse. You have replacement fuses for all of these located in the spears section that you can jump forward to. Here on the port side of the boat, just forward of the chart table under the saloon seats, we have all of the power setup and fuses. Here is your main automatic switching control box to switch between shore power and generator power. You do not need to manually switch this, that's where it's located. Here you have all of your 240 volt fuses. Now, these are all labeled individually with what they are. If something on board is not working, have a look at the fuses here to see if any of them are in the off position. 
Then if it is, you can switch it back to on. If you have any further problems, call Yacht Explorer. Inside this section here, you have your charger and inverter combo. Now this here, if you have a problem with the charge coming into or going out to the outlets in the boat, check this switch here and it can switch it off, reset the system and then switch it back on. Give it at least two minutes of being off before you turn it back on. Down here are all of the main breakers on the battery system. So part of your safety equipment is located here in these top cupboards. Let's get it out and take a look what you've got. So within this equipment you have your binoculars, uh, a lamp which there is two of, your disco lights which there is three of, manuals and information for the boat, repair kit and cleaning kit for the dinghy. This is the Hansa service kit with the spears. In here you have spear hinges for the cupboards, your spear fuses for lights and general things, and your spear large fuses, your spear large fuses for the anchor windlass and other large power drawing systems. And you also have your emergency ladder, which you can hang off the side of the boat to retrieve a man overboard. The rest of your safety equipment is located underneath the saloon seat. Here in this equipment you have your life jackets. These are inflatable life jackets. Your sea anchor and drogue, repair kit, bolt cutters, tool kit, first aid kit, axe for emergencies, and your day shapes for anchoring and motor sailing. Also on the starboard side of the saloon you have your extra equipment in here which are your smoke flares. Within this equipment you have all of your flares Foghorn for emergencies, the plug for the sonar through hull fitting, flags, life buoy light, and your full set of harnesses in which there is a full set up in the cupboard. You also have a couple of spears for the power outlets for the shore power for the boat. These are very important. These are the bungs or wooden bungs to stop any through hull fittings that leak in the boat. In an event of an emergency, and you have a hole in the boat from a failed valve, take one of these size bungs that fits and hammer this into the hole. This will swell and stop the main leak. You have three fire extinguishers on board Mila Felice. Two of them are located in this cupboard here on the starboard side of the saloon. The other one is located in the cockpit storage locker on the starboard side lazarette. The interior and saloon lights are controlled on the hut. The interior lights are controlled by these touch panels here. You can turn your main lights off and on by pressing the power button and then select zones for which lights you want. Or you can select these lights separately. There is also a dimmer if when you turn the light on you press and hold until the appropriate level of light has been achieved. Mille Felice also has a hydraulically lowerable saloon table so that you can put it right down and put the topper pad on it to make a large double bed. Push and hold this button at the chart table to lower. Be very careful with this table when it is down. You cannot stand or kneel on the ends of the table go across and support the weight in the middle. It's fine for adults to be laying down on the bed, but not point loading on the edges or you will break the table. The cooking gas valve is located here underneath the stove cupboard. When it is in line like this, it is on. When it is across the line like this, it is closed. Remember to close this when you finish cooking and turn the gas off at the bottle. Mila Felice has a double drawer fridge freezer system. The bottom is the fridge and the top is the freezer. You can control the temperature by pressing on the snowflake symbol. Colder temperatures are when the light is illuminated at this end. Warmer temperatures are here. 
To turn the fridges off, press the power button. If there is no light displayed, the fridges are off. Underneath the floor in the middle of the saloon is the fuel changeover valve. In this position, we are using the starboard fuel tank. In this position, you are using the port fuel tank. Also located in here are the fuel shutoff valves for both tanks and the fuel shutoff valve for the generator. The generator automatically runs out of the starboard tank. Also under this panel you have your electric automatic bilge pump located in the center of the boat. Mila Flite is equipped with five automatic electric bilge pumps. One under the aft cabins, one under the cabin sole in front of the companionway, one under the forward settee below the TV, and one under the forward cabin beds. The last one is in the forward skipper's cabin in the bow. You also have your emergency manual bilge pump, pumpable from the port helm station in the cockpit. To use this bilge pump, pull out the handle like so, and then pump in and out to remove the water from the hull. Each bathroom on board Metaflitze has a shower and the shower pump drain is automatic. So once you flow the water into the shower pump drain, it will automatically turn on and pump the water out of the yacht. To use the electric flush toilets on the boat, go to the toilet, make sure the bowl is full of water. You can do this by pushing this button here to fill with water. Once you've been to the toilet, you can push this top button, which will flush by bringing water in and taking waste out at the same time. Hold this down for at least 5 to 10 seconds so that it can take the waste up through the pipes and down into the holding tank. If you want to fill or empty the bowl manually, you can do it with this button. This side to fill and this side to remove the water. If you're going to be going sailing and heeling over, remove the water from the toilets to avoid spillage. To operate the manual pump toilet, first switch over to here, which will flow water in and pump water out. Unlock the handle. Let the water come up to level. Once you have been to the toilet, flip over to drain, empty out the contents of the toilet, flick back to pump, and pump 20 to 30 times. This will allow to get the waste up through the pipes and down into the holding tank or into the sea. Turn the handle to lock. Mila Felice has four bathrooms, each with their own toilet and a toilet in the skipper's cabin. So five toilets total. Each of the aft bathrooms have a holding tank that you can close and open when you're out at sea. The forward port runs straight through to the ocean, so you cannot use this when you are in port or nearby the shore. The forward starboard head the valve for this blackwater tank is located in the skipper's cabin. When the valve is in line like this, it is open. When it is across the valve like this, it is closed. In the aft starboard cabin, the holding tank valve is located underneath the cabin sole here. When the valve is across the line like this, it is closed. When the valve is in line with the line like this, it is open. In the skipper's cabin, we have the black water valve for the holding tank and the forward starboard head. That valve is located down here. When it is in line with the line like this, it is open. When it is across the line like this, it is closed. Also in the skipper's cabin, you have the control for the anchor windlass and access to the anchor chain area. 
The skipper's cabin has a manual pump toilet, which flows directly into the sea. Sure. There is no black water tank on this. So to operate the dinghy davits, you have these two lines here that hold the dinghy up through the davit system. They are stopped at these clutches here. We have an extra line tied on to stop the dinghy swinging. You need to remove this before lowering the dinghy. Take control of both lines. Open the clutches and lower down the dinghy. Be careful to check as you're doing this that it's not getting caught on any of the rear of the boat. Also, make sure your swim platform is up. You cannot lower it with the swim platform down. Once the tender is all the way to the water, you can lower your swim platform so that you can access the tender. To lower the swim platform, use this switch here marked door stern. Make sure the area is clear and then hold down on the down position to lower. Always be careful not to leave the swim, swim platform down if there are waves coming in as they will bounce the swim platform on the hydraulic ram. Once the platform is down and the tender is all the way in the water, you can remove the bridle and attach the painter to the oil. To put the telescopical davits away if you're not using them, undo these and slide into here. Tension again. You'll need to remove the lifelines. Once you've collapsed the first end into itself, lock the handle, lift this vertical, and you have to rotate anti-clockwise. Lift. Remember to stow away the lines carefully and tidily so that they do not catch into your propeller. So to lower your outboard engine, you have the outboard engine davit to help you with this so you do not hurt your back. To set this up, you need to take the line off the rail. to release the block and pulley to come down to the engine. The bridle should already be attached to the engine like so. Clip this through the carabiner there. You can now take the weight of the engine onto the bridle. At any point to secure, you can wrap here and do a cleat hitch around the cleat on the unit. Once you have that set, you can undo the handles holding the outboard engine to the bracket. Once you have loosened those, you then place one person in the dinghy to receive the engine as it is lowered down, and one person here to manage the line. You can secure your dinghy to the yacht here with the line so that it does not float away while you're doing the operation. One person will be in the dinghy to receive the engine, the other lowering it down. Make sure you are secure and there are no waves around while you're doing this. Okay. One, two. Once the engine is free, release down slowly. Be very careful not to let any part of the engine impact the gel coat of the boat. Once you've got it down to the dinghy, drop the engine onto the transom. Lower, please. Further. 
further. Good. Secure the engine before taking the bridle off. Once your engine is secure, free the bridle. Remove the block and tackle from the engine. And return it to the boat. Once you've secured the tender, take the fuel tank from out of the garage, untie this, remembering that when you return it, you need to secure it again so that it's not free. Take this and the fuel hose into the tender. Once you've got your tank into the tender, take the fuel cable, take off the protective housing for the fuel cable, and then place this by pressing toggle down and pushing this into place. It should lock into place. First, undo the vent in the fuel tank to allow air to replace the missing fuel once you pump it into the engine. Your gear lever is located here. In the center or vertical like this, it is in neutral. Here it is in forward and here it is in reverse. You always want this in neutral before you start. This toggle here is your choke for starting cold. Pull it out all the way. The red cable is your kill cord. Always have this on your wrist before operating the tender. The kill cord, when pulled out of the kill position, will stop the engine. This is a safety feature you should always use. So if the driver falls out of the boat, the engine will not keep running. Then turn your throttle handle to the start position, and line it up with the toggle. One hand on the throttle, one hand on the pull lever. Make sure no one is in the way of your elbow when you pull to start. Once the engine starts, slowly pull in the choke so that it idles slower and warms up slowly. I had to stop it so that you could hear me. Always remember to wear your kill cord so that if you fall out of the boat, the engine stops. To lower the swim platform, use this switch here marked door stern. Make sure the area is clear and then hold down on the down position to lower. Once you have lowered your swim platform, you can then put down the swimming steers. To operate this, first make sure your platform is level and there are no waves about. Then, turn both of the latches on the floorboard and lift the floorboard up. Turn. Lift the ladder out. Be careful not to jam your fingers in any part and then fold out the steps and lower the steps into the water. Return the floorboard to position and lock it in place. Inside the garage of Mila Felice we have the fuel for the outboard engine, the life raft, emergency tiller for emergency steering, your hose for filling your fresh water tanks, extra dock lines and your 50 meter spear anchor line. Also through here you have the gas bottle, Turn your gas on, rotate this anti-clockwise. To turn the gas off, rotate this clockwise. If you need to change your bottle, hold the clasp, rotate the bottle. Replace with the new bottle. Be careful not to cross thread. and then replace it into the cupboard. This is also the location of the shore power breaker switch.
Miller Fleece has two shore power cables, one for the 220 volt house system and one for the 220 volt air conditioning system. These are both with 16 amp plugs and will plug into the connectors on the dock. You can find these cables coiled in this locker here and the other ends of them are attached into the boat at this point. They're both labeled clearly as air conditioning or shore power. And remember, if you have any issues with this, the breaker for this is located in the garage. Miller Fleece has two electric winches, one on the port side and one on the starboard side. These are controlled by this Lumar button here, which will control the electric power to it. Make sure the power is turned on to these with the C-Zone system or you're selected in the sailing option. Be very careful with these winches as they are very strong, so make sure that you are pressing slowly or in small intervals to make sure what you're winching is correct. Miller Fleece has a built-in electric barbecue and wet bar. Here you have running hot and cold water, the draining sink, the electric grill, and a fridge for drinks or other things. To run the electric barbecue, you need to be connected to either shore power or running your generator. So once you turn on your generator, this will automatically click into operation. Once you have either your shore power or your generator power running, press on off here to turn the power on and then increase the heat using the plus. This is a touch sensitive system. On this side of the barbecue, there is a fail safe that turns the power to the barbecue off once the lid is closed. Remember not to close the lid until the barbecue has cooled down. Miller Fleetza has one water tank in the bow. This is filled from the starboard bow and the cap that's labeled water. You can fill this with a freshwater hose when you stop at the dock. There is no need to change over any valves here. Once this drops below 5%, the pump will automatically stop pumping water and you need to refill. You will see this alarm on the C-Zone monitor. Miller Fleece has two fuel tanks. These are located under the floor just forward of the engine bay in the main saloon. Each of these at 260 litres. The switch for this is located just forward of the companionway steps in the floor underneath this panel. When it is to the starboard side, you are drawing off the starboard tank. When it is to the port side, you are drawing off the port tank. The diesel fill points are located on the starboard side at midships here. Remember to fill your diesel tanks completely when you come back from Charter. There is a diesel fuel station at Baltic Marina in the south side as you enter. Thank you for watching this video check-in for the Hansa 548 Mila Felice. I hope you have an amazing week. See you when you get back.